A. Crucifying old patterns. The old you is dead, so stop allowing your old patterns to continue. Do you believe the gospel? If you do, why do you continue to allow your old patterns to continue as though you have not been changed? The truth is that sometimes the memory of our old nature seems more real to us, or more strong to us, than our faith in our new nature. This belief empowers the old us to persist on long past its recommended expiration date, which is the day that we were saved and born again. I know, the struggle is real, but it is all the old nature. That old way of thinking about life, that old way of feeling day to day, those old habits, lifestyles, preferences, thoughts, desires, etc., they feel natural to us still. We know they aren't good. God's word tells us so. You've gotten rid of the really bad stuff. It's outside the car now. You no longer live the way that you used to, or you're actively pursuing this in all areas. But there's still another level. It's not enough that you've done your best to throw it out of the car. Get rid of it in the car too. For example, let's say you struggle with anger. I used to have an anger problem, and I had a hard time learning how to constructively harness those emotions. I would get really upset and punch several holes into walls and doors. Aside from the benefit of learning how to do a wall patch, there wasn't much good that came out of this. Now, there is a worse end to the spectrum of anger. Some let it get pent up and then take out their rage on others by getting into fights at bars and such. Some become physically abusive and take it out on their spouses or children. Some people allow it to get so out of control that it pushes them to commit murder. But it's not enough to just determine not to let it get that far. See it for the poisonous sin that it is. Sin is not a disease that needs to be managed. It's a cancer that needs to be removed. I became conscious of my anger problem and became determined to get a control of my anger. I learned a valuable lesson from the seven habits of highly effective people. Quote, between stimulus and response, there's a pause. End quote. Between what happens to you and how you decide to respond to it, there is a pause. A moment where you can decide how to respond. Take a breath or two. Decide. Don't just react. Choose. Within months, I had learned to control my anger so I didn't take it outwards. However, it was still frustrating inside. I still felt anger. I could just sit on it internally or walk it off. It took longer over time to learn how to turn to God in those moments, intentionally at first, and seek His peace. To step outside of myself and my situation and my feelings and just give it to Him. To choose to be the kind of person that acted the right way in response regardless of how I felt. My commitment to be who I wanted to be eventually led to me seeking God to change my heart. I didn't want to be a person that had anger. I wanted to be a man of peace. I wanted to feel peace. I wanted to be able to have peace whenever I wanted it, regardless of what happened to me or in life. The gospel provides us with this but we don't believe it all the time, not practically speaking. We don't think on the gospel in those moments. We react in the moment first, but we have the choice not to. We can use that pause to remind ourselves of what's really important, who we really are, and then use our response to it to glorify God. By doing so, we give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to change us. Over time, this became a habit, 
an unconscious behavior that I did instinctually. I eventually could even drive in rush hour traffic, and here near Tampa, Florida, it's pretty bad, and not be filled with road rage the whole time. I realized how far I had come when I noticed reckless, irresponsible drivers would nearly kill me, like seriously, with their dangerous, selfish driving, and instead of getting mad or even saying or even thinking curse words at them, I would just feel sorry for them. I would just pray for them to find Jesus. I could have just died. Thank you, Lord, for giving me some more time here. Lord, give that person salvation and peace so they don't hurt themselves or someone else. When that is your first response, you can rejoice. God's peace truly surpasses all understanding. My past struggles with pornography, lust, greed, Envy, gossip, fear, covetousness, and any other sins have all been overcome in similar ways. I'm far from perfect, but I know who I used to be, and it's night and day different than how I am now. And life has thrown me some pretty bad storms to walk through, and my new nature has helped me weather them a whole lot easier. You can do the same. You can have the fruit of the Spirit flowing in and through you, filling up your car to the brim. This is God's will for you. Believe this. Act on this. Abandon the false belief that you have to do sin management for life. It is that belief that has kept it around as long as it has been around. God has empowered you to overcome your sins. The question is, do you trust in God's promises? In chapter 3, section O, Toxic Habits, I talked about how we can have habits that are habitual, automatic, routine. This also applies to our thought life. Do your thoughts just run on autopilot, or are you conscious about them? Not only should you not let them run on autopilot, your autopilot sensor is the old you. The way you think is often your old programming still running its program. If you continue to think the way you've always thought, you will continue to believe what you've always believed. And if you continue to believe what you've always believed, you will continue to feel what you've always felt. And if you continue to feel what you've always felt, you will continue to act the way that you've always acted. And if you continue to act the way that you've always acted, you will continue to be who you've always been. One definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. That old person who thinks, believes, feels, and acts those old ways is supposed to be dead. You are now a new creation. So you must live your life analyzing every link in the chain. It's human nature to compensate, to take the path of least resistance, to do things efficiently, the way that's typical, normal, the way that you're used to doing things, to be at a place of normalcy, to achieve homeostasis. This is easier. This is comfortable. And certainty and comfort is one of the top four fundamental human needs. So there are forces, even good and natural ones, that want us to stay as we are. But we must change. It's not going to feel normal. It's not normal. It's not going to feel comfortable. It's not comfortable. It's going to feel odd and uncertain and foreign and difficult and even stressful or painful sometimes. Change is painful. Most people never fix their bad habits until the pain of change is less than the pain of staying the same. Consider physical fitness as an example. It's easier to deal with the pain of not liking how you look and feel than it is to adopt a new and more disciplined way of diet and exercise. But the truth is that a lifetime of being out of shape and all that comes with it 
physically, emotionally, mentally, etc., carries much more pain with it in the long run. In all of our challenges, we must keep our eyes on the goal and develop discipline to press through the pain to the other side. And when we commit to doing that, pain is not a problem. Pain isn't a sign that there's something wrong. The pain of overcoming our own defects and becoming all we can be is a pain signal that there's something right. So how do we change? Where do you start? How do you keep an eye on things once you're going? Analyze the chain. There could be a breakdown or disconnect anywhere in the chain. Think leads to believe, leads to feel, leads to act, leads to be. Who we are is what we repeatedly do. And what we do begins with our thoughts. Our thoughts initiate and drive the rest of the chain via cause and effect. You won't feel depression unless you first think about depressing things and then believe them. You won't be an angry person if you don't first feel angry and then act angry. You won't act on lust if you don't first allow yourself to think about things that produce lust and then stir up the feelings of lust. The good thing is that you can stop up the process at any point in the chain. You could think a lustful thought and then instead of believing on it and allowing it to take root and entertain it in your mind, cast it away immediately instead. Choose to think about something else and then allow that to go through the chain. Think about something else that is good and pure, something you believe is true and good, something you want to feel and to act on and to become. And if you allow the Holy Spirit to empower you in this process and become disciplined in it, you will eventually gain mastery over it. Now, your energies are not going to be used up daily in this rigorous struggle to manage your sin disease. That cancer will have been removed. You'll have peace and your energy can be used to live in a way that glorifies God and advances His kingdom instead. Think, which leads to believe, which leads to feel, which leads to act, which leads to be.